These are useless moves that still work in competitive Pokemon for some reason. Yeah, so you know how when you get your Pokemon to level 10 or 15 or whatever, and they start learning actual moves, and you immediately get rid of Growl? Well, if you play Gen 2 OU, then Growl is actually used. And it's not just because the you know, list of moves is so sparse that you uh, can't get anything better. No, it actually serves a very important purpose. It forms the entirety of Miltank's niche in OU. Well, Miltank also is very good because it has Heal Bell and Instant Recovery, of course, but it wouldn't really amount to much if it couldn't stop Snorlax. And any cursed Snorlax gets stalled by Miltank because Miltank is physically bulky enough to eat unboosted double edges all day. But as soon as Snorlax uh, uses curse, then it gets too strong and it gets overwhelmed, right? Well, with Growl, then you just drop its attack and now it's suddenly neutral again. And Snorlax only has 16 curses and Growl has a million PP. So you stall it very, very easily. And Snorlax doesn't have infinite double edges either. So as a result, Miltank does have a genuine niche in OU by using Growl. And it's not just Snorlax either. You can stop pretty much any curse user not named Machamp with it. And it's just a, a good move to even to slow down just physical attackers in general. So like, let's say Marowak or something like a Nidoking. Blissey also can use Growl sometimes, not to stall Snorlax, just to weaken Snorlax switching in. And in a similar vein, then Charm gets used in Gen 2 as well, except Charm weakens attack by two instead of by one. So Umbreon really shuts Snorlax down very hard with this. And I can even do stuff like cancel out Marowak Swords Dance. It's not, you know, a Marowak counter by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just another example of how it can shut down, you know, curse users like Steelix really, really hard because you're not just resetting their attack to neutral, you're dropping them all the way to minus one. So yeah, that's that's Growl and Charm, GSC staples. Wow. So Whitney was actually on to something then. Whitney knew exactly what she was doing. Okay, next is Defense Curl. I'm talking about, I feel yeah. like I know where you're going with this one. <laughs> okay, well, the obvious idea for Defense Curl is with rollout stuff, but that's really inconsistent. Sometimes it's tough to fit a Snorlax check onto a team or a dedicated Snorlax counter onto a team with all the other slots you want to have. So people always look at Fortress and say, well, that has a lot of defense. Why can't I use it to check Curse Snorlax? or at least Curse Snorlax without a fire move, a la Skarmory. Like, why why do I have to run Fortress and Skarmory when I can just run Fortress instead? Well, there are a lot of other reasons, including Belly Drum, Snorlax, and Marowak. But, you know, just for the sake of Curse Lax, normally you won't get away with beating Curse Lax with Fory because what are, what are you going to do to it? Toxic it? Well, rest, and then it boosts up to plus six and destroys. But with Defense Curl, then you do the exact same thing, just by, except that you boost your own defense. You pretty much neutralize its capacity to actually damage you meaningfully and you are able to stall it out especially because defense curl also has a million pp and it's it's really dumb because you can't actually do much to the snorlax besides stall it of course but what's really stupid about it is that you get roped into running really really dumb sets like what's your second to be like spikes, defense, curl, rest, rapid spin, you know, or toxic and run rapid spin somewhere else. So that's why it's not really used, but it does a bear worth mentioning to, it's as like the one way Fortress can actually leverage its defense to actually threaten Snorlax because other than that, it's like, well, I hope it lets me explode on it without a curse. Hope I get that lucky. And in, similarly to Defense Curl, then Armaldo in Gen 3 OU will sometimes use Harden. So Armaldo is a perfect Snorlax counter, and it's especially perfect because it's not weak to trappers. Snorlax very famously gets paired with things like Dugtrio and Magneton because they remove things like T-Tar and Metagross and, and even Celebi, but they will not really do much of anything to Armaldo. The problem is that, yes, Armaldo can knock off Snorlax's leftovers and Insane, that's gonna be annoying, and it can spam seismic tosses at it. But what happens when Snorlax starts cursing and resting? Well, you gotta stall it out with Armaldo, right? So what do you do? You use Harden. And you wanna know the best part about it? Because Armaldo has the battle armor ability, Snorlax can't even crit you. So yeah, boosting defense wow. rules. Oh, no. <laughs> this is way this is way better than iron defense body press nonsense. That's easy. No, you, you have 
you really have to go hardcore with these. Real chads use hardened Armaldo with battle armor. They really do. Especially because Armaldo kind of rules in general because knockoff and permanent sand is broken. Okay, then we have Worry Seed. Yeah, it's this is kind of a niche one, and it's not the easiest thing to fit, but... And you can also kind of uh, group of the other ability, ability swapping or ability changing moves. Normally it's like, okay, well, big deal. I remove, you know, Landorus's Intimidate or something. Even removing something like, cause it's already switched in or, you know, removing something like Keytrain's Flash Fire or Ferrothorn's Iron Barbs. Yeah, that can be nice, but it's not really going to make much of a difference. Even doing something like removing Rotom Wash's Levitate with these abilities, the users of these moves are not really going to get any use out of them. And, you know, before these Pokemon switch out and just come back. So what you want to be doing with Gastro Acid and Worry Seed and occasionally Skill Swap, but that one's a tougher sell, is a use these against Pokemon that really, really rely on these abilities. And this, this goes really specific because what you want to be using these moves for is for Pokemon with Poison Heal and Magic Guard. So Poison Heal, that one's kind of kind of obvious because you have these Pokemon that poison themselves, but they heal from it instead, right? The way that poison works is every turn, it's going to give them back 12.5 HP, but at the same time, that toxic counter from their own toxic orb is going up. You know, like the first turn, it would have done 6.25, then it would have done 12.5, then it would have done 25, you know, or 18.75, or, you know, things like that. It goes up um, exponentially each turn. So it doesn't really make a difference to a poison heal Pokemon because, you know, Gliscor or Breelum will sit on the field for a million turns, healing 12.5 every turn. But if you were to suddenly remove that poison heal ability, then they would suddenly take toxic damage in accordance to how many turns they've been on the field. So if you used Worry Seed after they'd been on the field for two turns, they would take 12.5% uh, damage. If you used it after six turns, they would take a lot more. I don't know off the top of my head how much percent that would be. But the ideal way, of course, to use Worry Seed in these situations is to wait until they've been on the field, if you can manage it, of course, wait until they've been on the field a lot of turns and then change their ability and watch them almost die. Because if I remember correctly, Toxic can never Oko something from full health. I think it maxes out at 94 or something or 93.75. But, it, you know, doing that much to Gliscor or Breloom is effectively going to KO them, most, most likely. I mean, it, it's very rare that you would actually get them to that point. But I mean, just doing because you do 40 to 50, you know, in that range to them and you force them to switch out. That's a real big win. But of course, if you can just, you know, neutralize Breloom coming in and force it to switch out, then that's already a win. Um, and with Magikarp Pokemon, it's the same, except you have to status them first. I mean, Magikarp Pokemon love switching into Toxic, right? So they kind of will play into your hands. That's that's kind of why you have Magikarp Pokemon to switch into Toxic and Scald and things like that. That. So it's pretty much the same idea. You know, they've been statused, ideally toxic. And then you have your Worry Seed, Gastro Acid, maybe Skill Swap Pokemon, just take their Magic Art away and, you know, take it for yourself, of course, as you do that. And uh, suddenly it's the same exact thing as against a Poison Heal Poke. So then the last one is, the last useless move we have to talk about is Ghost Type Curse. Yeah, this one, it, it's such a cool idea, but it doesn't really get used because Ghost Types just generally have better things to be doing, and the cost is big. I mean, the 25% per turn is nasty, but it comes at the cost of half your own health, and Ghost Types famously have longevity issues as it is. However, I, I can recall one instance where it was used, and that was on this Generation 4 stall team, which used Spirit Team. And stall teams have always had the issue of how do we deal with setup sweepers once we can no longer phase them out, once they're the last Pokemon. Let's say in the case of Calm Mind Suicune, you can roar it with something like Gyarados a million times, but once it's the last Pokemon and you can't roar it anymore and it just Calm Minds and rests in your face, then you just lose, right? So a lot of times stall teams will employ measures to you know keep this in mind. Like in newer gens, it might be unaware. In older gens, it might be tricked or like Parish Song or like Encore, things like that. So this specific stall team used Cursed Spiritomb because Spiritomb, you know, its move pool, it, it kind of is a blob that just gets by on its typing more than any sort of pressured exerts. 
I mean, it really just needs Will-O-Wisp and like Stab. So it's not really, you know, pining for other moves to be used. And instead of, you know, using something that's not really going to make much impact, then you have something that finishes the game off. You know, you have the stall team. It's really good against everything. But when Suicune is the last Pokemon, then you just kind of lose. Oh, and now Spiritomb will curse. And now Suicune is losing 25% per, per turn. And there's no way it can stall that out. And you win. Is this a U a U, -U team in Jet 4? No, this is an OU team. This was a, a team used to dominate, you know, the OU ladder and OU tournaments. Oh, uh, wow. The player was in perfect luck. Yeah, his, his team, as I remember, he called it fried ice cream. And it was Swampert, Fortress, Rotom, Appliance Rotom, Gyarados, Blissey, and Spiritomb. Wow, cool. I think that's, do you have anything more to say about that? Or? I would love to say that False Swipe has been used in competitive scene, but as far as I'm aware, that is not the case. <laughs> we can only hope.